Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I'd really love it if you subscribe down below and click that like button. Have you done it? I'm waiting. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now let's get into the video. So basically today I'm going to talk about pain management. Now, if you saw my last video where I was showing you if you could see my pain, what it would look like, I figured a follow up video to that would be pain management. Now, as somebody who has quite a lot of chronic illnesses, I deal with chronic pain every day, as I'm sure probably a lot of you are who are watching this. And if you don't have a chronic illness or a disability, you might have pain from overuse or overtraining or whatever it is, this could be helpful for a lot of those reasons. And just to stress, these methods don't eliminate my pain or get rid of it completely. However, I found that they can help. And if they don't specifically help me, it's something I've tried that hasn't worked for me, but I know has worked for other people. So even if it hasn't worked for me, I'll still mention it because we're all different. We all have different needs and what works for me might not necessarily work for you and vice versa. But I thought I'd mention this stuff anyway. Now, chronic pain is living with a pain that has been there for six months or more. So me personally, I've had chronic pain for five years, potentially. Prior to that, I had pain on and off, chronic pain on and off, but now it's like consistent. And if you don't know, I have lupus, Lyme disease, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. I also have comorbidities of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is POTS, posterior orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. I have mast cell activation syndrome. I've got allergies and sensitivities. I've got asthma and the list goes on. I've also got fibromyalgia, ME, chronic fatigue syndrome and so on. So you can imagine my list of pains is pretty bad. I've also got peripheral neuropathy, which is nerve damage. And you can imagine that is a huge chunk of my pain as well. This again is just what I found to help me. Please don't take this as it will 100% eliminate your pain, but I hope that you find this helpful in some way. One of the main things I deal with is joint dislocations, particularly in my knees and shoulders. Sometimes they can happen in my elbows, my fingers and whatnot, but predominantly it is in my knees. That is my big problematic area which is why I use a wheelchair and crutches. So the main thing that really helps are knee supports. I'll leave a link down below where I spoke about my mobility aids and what helps me. These are from Amazon and I just secure them around my knees. And although they don't stop the dislocations, they can really help. Nothing is really a fix it all cure or anything, but the less dislocations we have, the better. Now, obviously you don't need to get dislocations to support your knees. Sometimes it's an injury. So yeah, obviously you can get these for shoulders and whatnot. So that is the main thing that helps me. The next thing is my mobility aids. Now, obviously not everyone use mobility aids, but these are specific crutches that sit on the forearms. Again, I spoke more about these in my mobility aids video, which I will leave linked down below. These were specifically made for me. You might need, I don't know, a walking stick or whatever to help you get about. Mobility aids can really help to eliminate pain. Third thing, which is probably the first thing that most people would think of doing anyway, is to use ice and cold packs. Now, these are a lifesaver. They're brilliant because they have gel inside and you can put them in the freezer or you can heat them so they can be used hot or cold and again like the knee supports they have these straps that go around them and depending on whether you prefer hot or cold therapy is that the word um these can be great now when i have my arthritic symptoms or when i'm swelling these are really good because they mold around your joints you can really put them on quite nicely and that feels so good <laughs> and i think Unlike ice itself, you can keep these on for longer. I've actually slept with these on and 
that has been fine. You can put it on your shoulders. You can wrap it around your arms, wherever you need it to go. I actually have four of these. <laughs> so that's how much I like them. These are from Amazon. You could probably pick them up at pharmacies and they last a really long time. So I would highly recommend them. The next thing is a hot water bottle. Now, my hot water bottle is really good because it's not your typical hot water bottle. I'll show you. This was actually gifted to me from an Instagram friend and it's amazing. It's by the company Yuyu and it's a long hot water bottle like a sausage and it's great because you can wrap it around you. You can put it around your back, your waist around your legs wherever you need it to go it is amazing you just fill it up with hot water it is soft and fuzzy i really love it so that's another thing i'd recommend i didn't even know these existed until she gifted it to me and this has been so helpful i love it now another thing that's pretty accessible is a tens machine now personally i don't find this worked for me however i know it can help a lot of people a lot of pregnant women use these because you can get chronic pain in pregnancy and i know other people with chronic illnesses who use tens machines this is i think from my local pharmacy what it is is it's a machine so it's got a little monitor and it's got these pads that you stick onto you wherever you need them or wherever you've got pain and you plug it in and the machine vibrates and the vibrations are supposed to help with the pain. Now again, these pads are probably too small. You can buy bigger pads, but this is what the pack comes with. You can buy the pads separately. A lot of people find this helpful for things like period pain and stuff like that. So this personally didn't work for me. However, like I said, it can help a lot of people. This is what the TENS machine looks like when it's on. It lights up and you can change the intensity. As I was going over my footage, I realized that I forgot to talk about the Theragod massager. It's a handheld massager that massages through vibrations and pulsations. It does have settings. However, even at the lower setting, it is still a bit too strong for me for the type of pains that I have. I know a lot of people that do like it though, and potentially I might be able to use it in the future, but for now, it is just a bit too intense for me. So I'm about to try this out. It's super heavy, but Chris is gonna have to help me with this, but I was reading and it's got so many options, including for sciatica, which is quite amazing. I also have this massager, it's like a massager cushion, which my parents got for me from Spain because we couldn't actually find it in England. But I've had it for about a year, so maybe you can now. But basically it's soft here. And here you've got the massager balls and it's like a heat therapy. So it massages you and puts heat onto your body. Now I'm not gonna put it on because Luna's here and she's absolutely scared of it, but I will insert a clip of me using it I really love this. It is really, 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 what's the word? Rejuvenating, feels amazing. Does it do something long-term? I'm not sure, but it does feel so good when you're using it. <laughs> Just have to use it when you're not there because you're a bit, you're a bit scared of it. She's scared of the massager. <laughs> Getting brave, Luna. Oh, wow. So those are just some of the devices that are quite helpful. Now, the other thing is, is 
you can see I've got pillows here and I like to have pillows, cushions everywhere because I can get pains anytime. So I like to have a bunch of them ready to go so that I can get comfortable. This is literally how I lay. I have these big cushions. I have cushions under my legs and then I elevate my legs. Now this is how I would watch TV, go on my phone, anything like that because I like to have the support under my legs and I like to keep my legs elevated. I have a hard time sitting up for a long period of time because of my chronic pain so I try to lay whenever I can and obviously keeping my neck supported is good to prevent um, neck pain and thoracic pain which I tend to get quite a lot of and my nerve pain and all that jazz. Now while I'm here I make sure I don't stay in one position for too long. I like to do this with my legs every now and again. I like to move my arms about. Sometimes I will just turn and reposition my cushions and do this for a bit. So the key is to don't stay stagnant in one position for too long because stagnancy can actually make your pain worse. I do this, especially when I eat or if I'm gonna use my phone sitting up, I keep my cushion here. So if you don't do that already, you really need to get a bunch of cushions. Obviously when people come over, this isn't attractive, but in the end of the day, they're coming into your home and your mobility and your health and wellness is way more important. So the other thing I have is this poof. I got it recently and it's from Ikea. I really like it because it's soft. And while I sit up and watch TV or eat, Chris has actually left me some accessible snacks here because when he goes to work, I can't really make myself food and they're all gluten free and safe for me. So if I want to eat something, I can. But yeah, I really enjoy this poof. It's soft and comfortable and it's just the same height as my sofa and it's from Ikea and my parents got it for me. So I really like that when I'm watching TV. You can see Luna likes it too. We often have to share it, don't we, Bebs? <laughs> but she lets me, she lets me share it. She likes sharing it with me. And if you guys are interested in the snacks I've got, I've got tomato and basil flavored, um, what are they, hummus chips? I've got, gluten-free pretzels, McCoy's crisps, wheat-free. And in here, I'm pretty sure there is a, uh, an Ananda's round, but I don't want to open it. I'll put up a picture somewhere here. <laughs> so now we're upstairs. I'm going to take you into my bedroom because this is a really good hack for me. Um, welcome to my bed. <laughs> As you can see, there is a, what's like a U-shape on the bed it's actually a pregnancy pillow and once I discovered a pregnancy pillow my life has changed obviously I still have problems with sleep and it doesn't eliminate pain completely however it helps so much do you see a theme here <laughs> softness cushions all that everywhere it helps guys it really does so I'm gonna show you how good it is as you can see, it is quite big. It is almost the whole size of me, but it is so good. What I love about it is you have a thicker side and a thinner side. So if you want less bulkiness, you can lay on this side and have it between your legs. And this side feels quite nice against your back. Or if you want a bit more thickness, you can lay on this side and have much more and put this around you if you have stomach pain. It's just really, really good. And the other thing is that's really good is that this is actually detachable. So if you can see there is a zip and you can remove it. Also, if you wanna sit up, you can actually put this over you. I can put this under my legs. You see, it's so many uses and I really love having things under my legs. So yeah, I would highly recommend this because even if you don't use this to sleep it can be used in your living room or whatnot it is just so good 
The only downside is obviously it's quite bulky. You can see it takes up quite a lot of space and there's no way to disguise it, but it's amazing. And I would highly recommend this pregnancy pillow. Again, from Amazon, I get a lot of stuff from Amazon. So the next thing I've got for you is an acupressure mat. So this was gifted to me on Instagram by a company called Ajna. Now, personally, I don't use this because it's got needles on it, <laughs> but it's supposed to mimic acupuncture. And I know a lot of people find acupuncture therapeutic, but um, they were willing to send it to me to try out. I told them it wasn't for me because the needles and they were super understanding. But I wanted to show you anyway, because I know a lot of people love these and a lot of people find them helpful. So if I just open it, you can see it's got a bunch of raised needles on it and you're supposed to lay on it and it sort of pierces your skin in acupressure points and it's supposed to help to calm down the pain so you can lay on it, you can sit on it, whatever you want to do. Some people even stand on it. Personally, like I can touch it, but um, I'm just afraid of needles. Um, <laughs> I mentioned in a video that I often faint and stuff. I have to take anxiety meds if I have to do needles. So ironic, given that I'm chronically ill, but that's just who I am and how I am. Maybe one day I'll get over my fit and I'll be able to use it. So I hang on to this, but yes, as I said, I don't personally use it, but I know a lot of people and friends who do and find it super helpful. So I just wanted to mention it. So the next thing is, I think this would help a lot of people, but it's an air purifier. I don't know about other countries, but in England, we have a lot of air humidity. Now, I have breathing problems because of lupus. However, even if you don't have breathing problems, breathing in humid air, air with a lot of damp in it isn't the best. Now, if your body has an overload of trying to filter out damp and mold and things like that, you're gonna actually feel more pain. That's something I learned on my chronic illness journey. So I actually have an air purifier now, which clears the air and eliminates the humidity. Obviously, if you live in a drier climate, you could get a humidifier, which I think adds moisture in. But me personally, I use a air purifier, which gets rid of the moisture and circulates the air for cleaner air. So have a look. It's a Philips one and it's quite good. It tells you, so at the moment, the air is a three, which isn't bad. Obviously the best is zero, the worst is 10. It's blue, which means it's pretty clean right now. And yeah, it lets you know when it gets bad and it lets you know when you need to change the filter and whatnot, and I just highly recommend it. thing I wanted to talk about was medication. So aside from those things that I showed you, medication can be really important and it's not always as scary as we think it is. Obviously you want to speak to your doctor and your physician first. You want to let them know the chronic pains or what type of pains you're experiencing and see if they have any useful information or advice for you. That'll be the first thing you want to do because you never know, the medication they prescribe to you might actually be really helpful. Now for me personally, because I didn't have a diagnosis for so many years and I didn't really know what was causing my pains, I went for an array of medications and most of them didn't work. And half of them I ended up being allergic to and my body was rejecting them, I was being sick and whatnot because of my mast cell activation syndrome due to EDS, but I didn't know but I finally found a prescription medication that works for me and it is called Deluxetine. So if I show you, I'm gonna cover my, oh, actually this side has nothing. It's called Deluxetine. It's also an antidepressant. That's what a lot of people use it for, but is also a nerve and pain medication. And after the numerous amounts of medications I tried, that one has helped me a lot. Obviously I had to get a prescription for that. I don't know if, I don't know if it's got a different name in America or in other countries, but that's what we call it here. 
Now, aside from prescription medications, because I know it's not affordable for a lot of people, it's not accessible, you can get some over-the-counter things that can be really helpful. Like for example, paracetamol and ibuprofen. I mean, this is super cheap, 99p. I personally don't take ibuprofen because I have an allergy to it. I get anaphylaxis from ibuprofen. So if I have minor pains, I will take paracetamol and that can be all right, depending on the type of pain. And if I have more severe pains, I will take cocodromol. It's got codeine and paracetamol in it. I've lost the packaging of this, but this is really good, but it can make you drowsy. Oh, Luna, you want some meds as well? <laughs> it can make you really drowsy. So I try to take this at night and only if my pain is really bad. So those you can get over the counter. And if you need a stronger prescription of this, again, you can ask your doctor. I've had stronger prescriptions of it over the years, but it can get addictive. So I try not to use it. Now, the other thing that we often don't think about is you can take supplements and natural medications. When I got diagnosed with Lyme disease, I realized that aside from antibiotics, there isn't much out there. And, and <laughs> be naughty. And antibiotics doesn't even help in a lot of cases. So what has helped a lot of people is natural medications. I actually spoke to a herbalist in California and I spoke to a Chinese medicine doctor at the John Hopkins School in New York. I think the school, um, the actual practice is called something else, but I know that's where it's situated. I'm gonna have to look that up. But basically I got a lot of information from them and I just wanted to share this with you because these herbal meds are accessible to anyone really. Now, you want to have good immune health if you want to be as pain free as you possibly can. Now, even if you don't have chronic pain, you wanna have good immune health anyway, especially with the pandemic right now, you want your immune system to be in tip top shape. And the best ones for that I found are vitamin C and zinc. These are just the companies I use, but I'm sure there are other brands out there. They are really good for that and pretty accessible to buy anywhere. Now I've mentioned that I have peripheral neuropathy, which is nerve damage. So a lot of my pain comes from my nerves. And if you have nerve pain as well, I would highly recommend vitamin B12 or magnesium. These are really good, not just for nerve health, but for general health too. I mean, everybody should be taking B12 and magnesium. It's actually really good for energy as well. And if you have like chronic fatigue, stuff like that, it can pep your energy up instead of having coffee all the time. And another really good one is, oh, sorry, it's a multivitamin. <laughs> Brain fog moment. Multivitamin. This is just overall general health, which any of us can take. Um, this company, Barefoot Nutrition, is the one that I went for. Now, aside from that, there are some things I don't have here because my other medication has helped the deluxetine, but curcumin, which is known as turmeric extract, can also be really good for pain and inflammation. It's so good for inflammation if you have it, but as I mentioned, I'm on lupus medication and I also take deluxetine now, which helps with that. But you can buy that fairly easily. The only thing is you have to take it with pepper and something fatty like coconut oil in order for it to work. Otherwise it just doesn't work. So I highly recommend that. Or you can try ashwagandha. That's really good for inflammation. I will have that written on the screen somewhere. Ashwagandha, which is known as Indian ginseng. There we go. And then if you have problems with sleep, which we know that if you don't get enough sleep, you don't heal properly. Therefore you have more pain. I have horrific insomnia, but again, the deluxetine has really helped with my sleep. So I highly encourage you to speak to your general practitioner or whatever doctor you have. Um, you can take melatonin. Melatonin is really good for sleep. Um, some people don't find it strong enough. You might need sleeping pills, but obviously sleeping pills aren't good long term. But in saying that as well, magnesium can help with sleep at night time. So magnesium is a really good one to have. So I hope 
that was helpful in terms of medication because we couldn't speak about pain and not speak about medication. Another thing I wanted to mention was the spoon theory. You may or you may have not heard about it. It's quite well known about in social media and quite a lot of people with chronic illness go by the spoon theory. I did it quite a bit in my early days of chronic illness and I found it quite helpful. So what it is, is you start your day with a certain number of spoons. Usually if you're chronically ill, you will have 12 spoons and each task you do takes one spoon away. Now, if you're not chronically ill, you might have 50 spoons, you might have 100 spoons, like everyone has different energy levels. But if you calculate how many spoons you've used per task, you know how much energy you have left. So if you overuse your spoons, the next day you're probably going to have to rest extra. So for example, brushing your teeth might take a spoon. Having a shower might take two or three spoons. Having breakfast will take a spoon. Posting on social media will take three spoons and then you can see how much you have left. You know, if you have to go out to say like a doctor's appointment or something, that might take 10 spoons. And you just sort of calculate it throughout your day and it can be really helpful. It's just a simple little thing that definitely helped me a lot in the beginning of my journey. As I've gone along, I feel like I've started to get to know what I can and can't do, what uses how much energy and whatnot. But it is a really good, useful tool to help you to not overexert yourself and use too much energy to where you're then burnt out for the next week or whatever it is trying to recover. And just to add the term spoony for somebody who's chronically ill actually came about from the spoon theory. That's its origins. Just wanted to add that little tidbit if you were interested in where the term spoony came from. see I'm outside in the garden because I wanted to talk about being outside and being in nature just getting fresh air whenever you can going for a walk just being outside whenever you can can really help it's so good for mental health it's good for our lungs it's good for our well-being you know we are just we have endless amount of beauty around us Obviously, it's not always easy to go out, but whenever we can, it is so good for us. I'm quite lucky that I have a small little garden that I can retreat to, and that's why I'm out here right now. I try to come out for about 20 minutes a day, even if it's just to, to just sit and do nothing or to sit and have a coffee. It is really, really good for our mental health, and I find that sometimes when I have really high pain days if i've been laying or sitting all day just coming outside for 20 minutes just really helps my mental health and it just distracts you and takes you away from that gloom and that horrible feeling that you might have been now the next thing is this. so something we often don't talk about is distraction now a lot of the time brain fog comes from the fact that we have so much pain going on in our body that our brain can't register what other people are telling us or we can't say what we want to say because our brain is so overtaken by the pain that we're going through and sometimes the best thing you can do is distract yourself from the pain if you've tried so many things and it's just not going away now i've got this fidget toy it's called a tangle tangle um again off amazon it's plastic which isn't the best for the environment but i've tried a bunch of fidget toys and i really enjoy this one because you can do a bunch of things with it so look you can just play with it i don't know but i like twisting it
so yeah just playing around with it even that sound that it makes don't know if you could hear it is really nice so sometimes even if i'm watching tv i will play with this because i don't know if you get this but if you have so much pain and you want to watch a show you can't concentrate on the show because you've got so much pain so i will play with this while i watch the show and it really helps i really highly recommend these i know you can get those balls that you squeeze there's a bunch of fidget toys there's the ones that have the bits that come out i find that kind of gross but yeah out of all the ones i've tried i really enjoy this one you can make it smaller bigger highly recommend now the next thing is is i do yoga if you didn't know i'm a instagram yogi i've been doing yoga for a number of years now and i've started doing accessible yoga over on my instagram as well because as you can see i'm a wheelchair user i also use crutches and exercise can be really really good so obviously sometimes we can't exercise our body doesn't always allow you have to listen to your body and if you are over fatigued if you are in so much pain sometimes exercising can make it worse however if you have lower pain days you really want to try and get in a bit of exercise whether that is a brisk walk whether that is slight bit of yoga i'll insert me doing some yoga it can be really helpful you don't have to do anything crazy it can be gentle stretches it can be meditation it is so good for us and i wanted to just show you some breath work which is a form of meditation that a lot of people find helpful so so you want to take a deep breath in hold it for a few seconds and deep breath out slowly make sure your posture is straight i have a tendency to slouch so this is really good for me too so let's go again take a deep breath in as far as you can hold it for a few seconds slowly take a deep breath out i find closing my eyes really helps too and I just really like doing breath work techniques when I'm outside because it, don't know, it just feels so much calmer. So I do it one more time, deep breath in. As much as you can, hold it for a few seconds. Slowly deep breath out. If you do that a few times, it's just, it feels so calming. It helps your blood to flow better, to circulate more you have pots it's so good for circulation so yeah and another one I like is nostril breathing so you hold on to you can use two fingers so you block off one side of your nose and you can go <laughs> hold your breath and slowly let it out and then you do the other side block that side of your nose deep breath in out quickly And that's it that's just a couple of techniques obviously i'm sure there's a lot more online that you could do meditation can be really good a lot of people think that you have to have like calming music on and chant and all these things you don't sometimes meditation can be done just laying down or just closing your eyes and listening to nature like i will just literally just lay here sometimes hands in prayer you want to make sure that you don't have your legs crossed because that's never good you want to receive that energy not be blocked from it so you want to keep your feet facing forwards your legs straight you can have your arms crossed you can have them down it's a lot of the time people have their palms facing up to receive energy this is really good you can make sure you have your back straight sometimes people like to cover themselves with a blanket because you can get cold but i'm good it's a warm day so you can have your palms up and just close your eyes and just listen to the wind. The sound of nature. Are there any birds? Can you hear traffic? Can you feel the 
breath in your lungs? Is it hot? Is it cold? That can feel really, really good. Some people fall asleep in meditation. You can have a guided one or you can just do it yourself. It's just really great. I personally recently started trying something called Yoga Nidra, which is a deep yogic sleep where you almost fall asleep, but not quite. Or the other one is sound healing, where you have sound bath. So it's like you've got these singing bowls and you have somebody hitting the bowls and it makes such a pleasant sound and it creates these frequencies that you don't normally get from music instruments that tap into different chakras. unblock certain chakras and help your body to align better so obviously i'm going into spirituality here but spirituality can be really helpful like i found so much good techniques through my yoga practice whether it be mindfulness mental health you know all that sort of stuff can be helpful don't knock anything till you try it that's what i will say and the last thing i wanted to talk about was crystals now think what you will maybe it's not for everybody but i like to believe that crystals have healing properties my husband recently bought me a big geode which i will insert and it's in our hallway because it's supposed to emit healing energy into the house Lily, you getting to know the crystal bebs necklaces that have a citrine on it or, or I have malas that have stones on them because stones and crystals are natural they come from the earth and therefore they hold energies at least that's what I believe and what a lot of people who believe in healing energy believe too and so if it can come from the earth well then it can emit that energy onto you there's also things like aromatherapy. Some people enjoy diffusers or essential oils. I have issues with scents because of my asthma, my allergies. So I would love to be able to do that in the future. But as things stand, I either call for it sets off an asthma attack. But if you don't have those issues, diffusers can be great. Essential oils are really good. And yeah, massage. If your partner is willing to massage you or go pay for a massage get one done you know these are just some of the things that i found quite helpful so yeah i hope this was insightful in some way i hope you gained knowledge i hope you give these a go try them out if you try them let me know how it went did something work for you did not is there something I didn't mention that I should have mentioned that you would like to tell us about in the comments? Because I'm sure there's a lot more things out there that I haven't spoken about on here. So yeah, please feel free to let me know. But these are just some things that I found to work for me or I know that have helped other people. So again, thanks for being here. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. And thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.